So this video today is going to be on using uh, drip tape uh, for irrigation. We do quite a bit around our farm and come up with a pretty good system for getting it installed. So uh, all the products you see out in front of me today, we're going to kind of go through. This is the actual tape that uh, we set up that runs between all of our uh, plants on our rows and then just some stuff to get your, uh, your water line set up. So uh, we're going to kind of walk you through, uh, get started with the black line process and then get the drip tape added in. So. Uh, okay, so I'm just going to show this because this is a little bit convoluted, but basically right off your spigot, there goes to a pressure regulator, uh, all drip tape, you got to um, have, if your water pressure um, regulated, you can't just run a straight hose to it. Uh, this particular one goes into four-way because we're going to run several lines off this, and this one that we're putting in today, we're going to put a timer on. But basically your black line or just water hose comes into uh, the little adapter thing that screws onto your hose. That's pretty simple to put on. I'll show you on the cap, it's the same way. So we're going to wander down to the other end and show you uh, the other end of this. Okay, so here we are at the other end. Uh, one thing we do do is uh, run a bunch of water through it and just if there's any dirt, anything uh, that could poten uh, potentially clog your your drip tape, uh, you want to get it rinsed out. Um, I don't know if I mentioned the size of the, the black line here, but it, it's half inch, so it's slightly uh, smaller than like what a standard garden hose would be. But anyway, get this guy uh, rinsed out and then we're going to put a cap on it. Okay, so the, the cap comes on your black line, and it, they're really easy. They just push right on. It's the same thing with the other end for uh, hooking it up with your hose bibs. Um, getting them started is a little bit of a challenge, but once they get on there, you just kind of twist them on. And they're all capped. And you can take the, this cap off if you want to see how far it is in there. But you basically want that black line to come about halfway through, maybe a little bit farther, and that'll create a good seal. So anyway, this is basically hose is ready to ready to go, uh, hold water, and we'll start putting our, uh, our, our drip lines into it. So our next step is getting uh, our valves or the connections that's going to go to the tape. Um, you can get uh, these when you order your drip tape, ask for a couple of them because uh, you'll end up losing them or they get dull. But uh, basically you're just going to poke a little hole in your black line. Um, this end of the valve right here goes into that black line. and. Um, on, on, on these, you can use two different kinds of connections. There's ones that don't have uh, the little twist top here. Um, what, what we use those for is just so we can manage which water you're turning on and off. Uh, they're a little bit hard to get in there. you got to kind of just work them back and forth. But uh, they end up just popping right in. Um, but what we, we've gone with with these is if you have different crops, especially in veggies, where like if you want to stop watering like your potatoes or, or whatever, you can turn that off and keep watering your tomatoes. But uh, once they're in, um, they're adjustable, on and off, and then uh, we'll get the, the tape hook, hooked up to them. So we're getting ready to get these strung out. I kind of want to show how this works. I don't know how well it's going to come across on the video, but you can see there's little tiny uh, emitters that run all down this. Um, you can get in all different ranges as far as how far apart they are. Um, uh, this one, I believe, is an 8-inch one. Uh, but anyway... Um, we're going to get this attached to our, our black line, which is as simple as poking this through and screwing that nut down and it's in place. And then we'll take a roll down the length of our bed and I'll show you how we cap them. Okay, so uh, all we do is roll it out and use a stick or something to be your kind of center pivot point and just go down the full length of the bed. Down to the end, uh, you can cut, cut it off, you know, knife or scissors, doesn't really matter. And you can buy an end cap for these, and they're like a buck a piece. So what we came up with um, is just if you fold your drip line over twice, and then kind of buckle it in the middle so it makes like a U shape, then you can take your little tube that you cut off, and if you plug that over the end and slide it on, um, it works just as well. It'll, it'll drip a little bit, but it, it beats having to buy caps for the, the end of all your lines. Okay. Very last step is turn the water on. And it takes a little while for them all to fill. Um, you will see right your uh, valves until they're totally full. There'll be a little bit of leaking, but um, uh, you can see these these first rows. You flip it over, and they're already starting to basically just get their little drippers going. So really efficient way to water. Anyway, so this section's done. We're on to the next one. So hopefully this has been helpful. Um, like I said, we run, we run a lot of the stuff. We have about 6,000 feet across our farm. Um, and 
main reason why we use it is um, it uh, allows us to water more at once um, just because uh, the lower pressure not using as much water and it would be really helpful if you had uh, if you had to pay for your water if you're on a city water system or whatever but anyway um, like I said it, it works great for pretty much everything we grow so as always have a good one till next time